I'm back here in Chimani Mani, climbing again, going to the mountain hut tonight. Once again, feeling privileged to be back in Zimbabwe. Come this time with my son down there and my father. Like it's a three generational tour around Zimbabwe. And uh, we could not start it anywhere else other than Chimani Mani. I'm making you rat codes. Queer Gomo. It's okay. Queer Gomo. Upotere Chizukuru. Queer Gomo. Upotere Chiningi Nachang. What a cup of Queer Gomo. Upotere Chizukuru. I don't remember too many money. Things are hard. I mean, admittedly, I've come up, gone back down to check on the the party behind us, and come back up with the chicken because it's decided we get to the mountain hut, make the fire, and we cook, boil the chicken. Oh, that was a little fun. Down and up again. See you at the mountain hut, baby. At the beginning of the climb up Chimani Mani, it's pretty steep, but after a few hours you get to this plateau, this beautiful plateau that is scattered with these misshapen rocks covered in lichen. It's almost like an alien landscape, and the sun flooding in, giving golden light and these long, weirdly shaped shadows. And of course your body's filled with these endorphins from making the climb, so naturally one goes to sing. And the song I went straight for was Bob Dylan's Mr. Tambourine Man. The line that really spoke to me in this alien landscape was, take me disappearing through the smoke rings of my mind. Then take me disappearing through the smoke rings of my mind, down the foggy ruins of time. The past the frozen leaves, the haunted frightened trees, out to the windy beach, far from the twisted reach of crazy sorrow. Yes, to dance beneath the diamond sky with one hand waving free, silhouetted by the sea, circled by the circus sands, with all memory and faith. Driven deep beneath the waves Let me forget about today until tomorrow Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me I'm not sleepy and there is no place I'm going to Hey, Mr. Tambourine Man, play a song for me in the jingle jangle morning I'll come following you. This very, very place we're on now is a very flat area that is referred to as the uh, alien football ground. And legend has it that aliens, when they landed here, faced uh, humans in the shape of a football team. The uh, captain was a man named Alex Big, strong man. He was the, 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 the goalkeeper on that, that team. The aliens and the humans were about to have a uh, confrontation when it was decided that they would settle their differences over a game of football. The aliens took the lead. I mean, they had these amazing superpowers. Nothing they could do could seal the victory until it bounced off Alex's belly. Ball went from the ball was hit so strong and, and all the energy was thrown back into the ball by once again Alex's belly and went all the way into the goal and the aliens left. This is the legend of this of, of this land. I don't I can't make this stuff up. I heard the legend was uh, was for many generations and I've just come to learn of it right now right here. Bongozo. There is the mountain hut. By the way, this is where the Elands used to, to roam. And you look at those rocks and think, oh, I can see one. Those are rocks. <laughs> those rocks down there look like Elands. 
and zebra, like oh, buck. Yeah. yeah, but we've arrived, we've arrived. <laughs> oh, look, they made it for time for sundowners. Look at this. Because uh, you've got the beers. You've got the beers. No, someone has got the beers. Seriously? Yeah, he... You've had the beers the whole time? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, Mickey, get him. He's had the beers the whole time. Get him, Mickey. Get him. Get him. I am here at the uh, mountain hut in Chimani Mani in front of a fire drinking a castle lager after having a cup of soup and waiting for the uh, sadzan chicken. Life does not get any better than this. Apparently here is one of the greatest places to spot uh, Ryan's belt. Apparently there's a a team of Ryan's belt spotters go around the world and this is prime A1 spot to see the Ryan's belt which apparently there's some uh, exciting uh, facts we have uh, about to be delivered to us about uh, a Ryan's belt. I can't see it being that exciting to be honest. Uh, but otherwise yeah we're going to have some chicken, we're going to have some campfire stories. Colin is an expert at the campfire stories especially the uh, why the tortoise has its shell. When he, when he starts telling that story I have to leave. I have to leave for 20 minutes and I come back and everyone's going, oh, have you finished the story yet? <laughs> I'm going to get you on that one. Yeah. With, of course, Mickey, it's such a pleasure being up here with my, my son and uh, Tawakanda is, is uh, the name that was given to him because we can't remember his real name. Tawanda. Yeah. I got his name. Tawanda <laughs> it is. Winston. So this is what life is all about. If, if you ask me what would be the greatest thing you could imagine yourself doing on a late evening in August, I would say sitting at Mountain Hut in Chimani Mani by the fire with a castle lager waiting for the satsa and chicken. This is Bongo Zoza signing out from the Mountain Hut. Ah, I was on fire, baby. <laughs> I was on fire. This is blowing out. When you're in the Chimani Manis, make sure that your guide, who will probably be Colin, make sure he takes you to see the rock paintings, okay? Rock paintings are a complete delight. They were here painted 4,000 years ago and they're still here. But there are three very tall people suggesting dominance. This half-sized half, half -sized person has Magaro Makuru, okay? Which is um, large buttock area in English. Here we have four children, actually two children, and two half people that have been cut off um, halfway through. Mickey suggests that maybe deceased relatives. Um, good idea there, Mickey. And very important here is some of the haircuts have rasta, our rasta haircuts. Now, rastas in Africa are often seen as an external influence from Jamaica or Ethiopia. But in fact, this is historical evidence. 4,000 years ago, the, the, the tallest man, the most dominant man here, had rasta hair. Jarastafari. I just finished my walk here. Just come off Jumani Mani. I had such an amazing walk. We were the only people on the mountain, which was nice, except that there's no reason that this mountain is empty of tourists. I advise all of you that are interested in climbing mountains, this scenery here behind me is some of the most spectacular scenery I've ever seen in the world. I've been speaking to the guides. I've been asking why is it that there's so few tourists here? Why is it that we had these whole range of mountains to ourselves? Why are there no more people? And the Western media tells us Zimbabwe is in meltdown. You know, it's dangerous. Well, it's not dangerous. Zimbabwe is open for tourists. This is Team Bongo Zozo back from Chimani Mani. We had the best time. Uh, we had the mountains to ourselves, which is really logical because they're the most beautiful place, open to tourists, open to climbers, come to Chimani Mani, seeing is believing. Bongo Zonzo! Come to Zimbabwe. It's great here.